Hello again! In this video, we will fully texture the lion's heads that we sculpted in Modeler and go from this to something like this. Now, before we begin, a few words about the process. You may have noticed that we only sculpted the main shapes in Modeler and that the model is still lacking a lot of features to look like the final result. We are missing, for example, all the crisp chiseling that makes this piece unique. And that's because I usually like to start from a simple sculpt and leverage all the tertiary shapes through texturing. Not only is it easier and more efficient, but it's also less destructive, as we will soon see. All right, let's open Substance Painter. In the previous video, we prepared our model for texturing to make our life easier, so all we have to do now is to get our mesh, change the resolution to 2048, and most importantly, go into the auto unwrap settings. Our model has already been unwrapped in Modeler, so we don't need to generate new seams or islands, but we do need to update the packing since we applied texture sets in the meantime. You can decide for the amount of UV tiles you want and hit OK. Painter will take some time to compute and automatically split your UV islands in texture sets. That kind of auto-packing is not perfect and you might want to do it manually if you're expecting something very optimized, but in our case, this will work just fine. Now the second thing we want to do is bake our model to retrieve all the information from the geometry. We do that by going to the texture set settings here and clicking on bake mesh maps. Let's do a very simple bake, set the output size to 2048 and keep only the maps we need. Once it's done, you can cycle through the baked map by pressing B. We are now ready to start texturing. Let's take a look at our reference. The most prominent feature is the Damascene surface, with its delicately punched gold. We could make this in Painter if we want it, but it would take a lot of time and effort, and it might not be worth it. And that's because that kind of material can be created on its own before being applied to a specific mesh. To make this point clearer, we need to make the distinction between material authoring and texturing. Material authoring refers to creating a tileable material from scratch that can then be applied to various meshes. Texturing, on the other hand, is more about applying ready-made materials to specific parts of a mesh using brushes or generators. Substance Designer and Sampler are material authoring tools. You use them to create tileable base material. Painter is more of a texturing tool. Each option has its pros and cons. You can create tileable base materials in Painter if you want, but it gets tedious pretty quickly and you'll be more limited than in Designer. So let's hop into Designer to quickly make our Damascene material. This isn't a designer tutorial, I'm just going to quickly walk you over what I did. And as you can see, it's not a complex material. If you want to know more about it, you can download it in the project files and take some time to study the graph. All right, so I usually start by creating some kind of background for my material. In this case, I wanted to have a base with soft bumps that would look like metal with imperfections. I did that by blending a uniform gray with a soft clouds to noise. This gave me what I wanted, and so all I had to do next was to add these little punch marks all over the surface. To do that, I studied closely the reference and watched a few videos about the art of damascening. And let me tell you, the craftsman who made that sword guard 600 years ago probably spent a lot of time carefully punching that thin layer of gold. He also followed the edge flow of the face, as you can see here on the nose. Something I won't bother with, but hey, that's impressive. Okay, so to do that, I first created that hollow mark left by the punch. I made three variations of it to make it more organic and varied, and then I fed them into a tile sampler, randomizing slightly the position, scale, and luminance. Then, to create that raised lip around the marks, I fiddled with the curves a bit, then warped the whole thing, and simply subtracted it from the metal base. And that's it. The rest is just about deriving the color and roughness from that very simple height setup. 
Once the material is finished, all we have to do is go to the share option here and send it to Painter. All right, our material has safely landed in Painter's library. We can now drag and drop it onto our model. Right off the bat, it's not too bad, but if we take a closer look, we can spot some UV issues. A quick way to check the seams is to add a layer with a solid color, then mask it and add a UV border generator in the mask. It will help you visualize how the cuts warp around your model, and in our case, this is clearly not great. Good news is Painter provides us with a quick way of fixing this. All we need to do is go to the Fill Properties and switch the Projection Mode to Triplanar. See the difference? Perfect. Now let's increase the tiling and bump up the resolution to 4K. All right, much better. Now let the texturing work begin. The first thing we want to do is to break down that uniformity and add some damage to the gold layer. So let's add a fill layer on top of it and search for rust material in the library. To control where the rust should appear, we need to add a black mask to the layer and work in that mask. Now in our reference, we can see that the rust collects under the swirly ornaments. So let's try to replicate that. And this is where baked maps come in handy. Let's add a generator to our mask and choose the ambient occlusion one. Alt clicking the mask lets us preview it. Here you can see how useful it will be for the effects we are after because it selects all the occluded areas. All we need to do is to invert the values and play a bit with the contrast and balance, like so. Pressing M to go back to material mode and fine tune the effect. Now it's still too uniform, of course, so we need to keep working on it. I'm going to first add a blur to soften the edges, then a warp to break down the outline. Lastly, we can add a grunge map to make it even more organic. But be careful. Each time we make some kind of fill operation, Painter will use the UV projection by default. So here it's best if we switch to Triplanar once more. Then we have to pick an interesting blending mode. And again, spend some time testing different settings. Now with that first layer of rest done, we need to keep pushing and add new layers to make the effect more subtle and convincing. This time, no need to create it from scratch. We can simply duplicate the first layer and make changes to it. Here, going for a darker reddish shade and then adjusting the mask. Slope blur to further break up the lines. Like that. Now you can see the benefit of having two passes of rest like that. It really solves that build-up effect. I'm going to duplicate that last layer once more, but this time I want to add random speckles of rest across the whole surface, so I can just clear the mask to start afresh. Then making the rest some kind of dark brown, like so. All right, let's add a grunge map in our mask with a fill. Here I'm going for paint fill. Increasing the tiling, adjusting the contrast and balance. Okay, good enough. Now, of course, it's giving us too much speckles, so in order to remove some of these, I'm going to add a paint layer to the mask in subtract mode. Then let's look for a nice brush, this one should do, and simply remove some of the excess rust. Although we could have used a procedural trick to do that, I find it nice sometimes to paint things by hand and have that manual control. All right. Now that the rest layers are done and neatly stacked in a group, we can move on to another important feature of the model, the eyes. 
let's create a fill layer. And instead of using the material mode, we can simply set the values we want for each channel. Now we have a problem here, and that's the fact that the height from our gold material is showing through, which we obviously don't want. To fix that, we need to go to the height channel and set the blending mode of the layer to normal. And now we have a smooth layer that completely overrides what's below it. Keep in mind though that if you place that layer in a group, you need to change the blending mode of the group as well. I created a group here because I know the eyes will take many layers and I want to be able to mask them all at once, at the group level. So let's add a black mask to the group and simply paint in it the area of the eyes. Perfect. Now we can start working on that reddish background. Using the same method as with the rest, duplicating the base, changing it slightly, and adding generators and grunge maps to mask it out. Crack Deep looks perfect for that. The UV projection also works well on this one, creating those nice radial streaks around the iris. Switching back to material mode, everything looks good. We might just soften the height here. Okay. And with a bit more work, this is what we get. Not bad. Now we need to add the iris. And for this feature, we can take advantage of Painter's Smart Materials library. This will make our life easier since those materials come with ready-made masks and groups. Let's try Iron Old. It should match our reference pretty well. Drag and drop it. And not that it comes in a folder already. So we need to drag it back in the eyes group so that it applies only to the area we defined earlier. And see here the power of Painter Smart Masks? They automatically rely on the baked map so that you barely have any manual work to do. Now obviously this needs a second mask in pass, so let's add a black mask and paint the irises simply by stamping the basic hard brush. Like so. For the pupil, the reference is unclear, so let's just add a fill layer and make it a fully black material with no specularity at all. Mask it out, and then carefully paint the inside. Alright, it's looking okay so far, but it's still a bit flat in my opinion. I'd like to make the irises pop out a bit more. So to do that, we can add a layer that will act on the height only. Simply deactivate the other channels. And careful now, this is a bit more technical. I want this layer to reuse the shape of the irises that we already painted. To do so, all I have to do is to go back to that layer, go in the mask stack, and add an anchor point. I need to add it on top of the information I want to reuse. So in that case, I think the basic paint layer will be enough. I'd rather not have something too noisy to work with. Rename your anchor point to make it easier to work with later. And now back to our height adjustment layer. To call for an anchor point, simply create a fill and go in the anchor point tab. There you have it. Now, every change that I'll make to the irises paint layer will propagate to the upper layers that use the anchor point. This is such a powerful feature. If you want to know more about it, we have a video on that topic. So right now the effect isn't really showing, but if we simply add a bevel to our first fill to expand it, we can then call for the anchor point once more, but this time in subtract mode to generate that nice rim. With levels and a bit of tweaking, we can get the desired effect. At some point, we need to switch back to material mode just to check how it looks and keep adjusting. We can call the face done and move on to the ornaments that are on the separate texture set. 
let's first fill the whole set with a solid gold material. Then tweak the color to make it match our damascene material. Something like that. Let's also adjust the roughness. Nice. Now in the reference, the bands are also thinly carved, and this is something we can recreate using generators and relying on the geometry information that we baked. In that case, though, I found it easier to do it simply manually. We start by adding a fill layer once more and keeping only the height channel. Then with a few effects applied and with lazy mouse mode enabled, all we have to do is carefully draw those lines, like so. Then, to add some grain and details to that first pass, we create yet another fill layer for the height, except this time we mask it with a grunge map and blur it slightly to get a wrinkled look. Quick level adjustments. And then we can go back to the Grange map to fine-tune the effect. I think it looks better with straight planar projection. The ornaments are done. I want to go back to the face itself to finish a few things up. I won't recreate everything live, but rather show you a few tricks that I used. The bridge of the nose, for example, should be somehow polished, because it's a protruding piece, right? And so by creating a layer with a lighter color and a smoother height, we can paint that effect pretty easily. Like that. To add wear, we can follow the same logic using an interesting brush with a few effects on top of it. And to push the details even further, we can polish that underlying metal bit, creating a smoother patch where it's supposed to be rubbed more often. Simply add a layer with a lower roughness and gently paint that patch in. Lastly, let's zoom in on one of the larger tears. Let me get rid of what I did to show it again. If I start painting here, you see a couple of things happening. First, the mask is revealing the good or rust material that we already used. But there's also a height layer above it that controls the raised lip that you see around the edges. I simply used an anchor point and played with the blending modes just like we did with the Iris's rim. This is perfect to make that tear more realistic and believable. Finally, for most of the gilded painting that you see on this model, it's a mix between loading patterns in fill mode and hand painting a few details, just like this. All right. Our texturing work is now finished and looks decent. It's time to think about staging and rendering our work. But the good news is we don't have to do anything manually, like exporting maps, reloading them elsewhere and so on. All we have to do is go to File, Send to, Send to Stager. This will automatically open Stager and load both your mesh and your textures already applied. Awesome! I see you in the next video to show you the steps we can follow to put our model under the best light possible.